Yo, what's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I have the patch 11.4 meta snapshot and big patch as you guys saw in the patch preview from a couple days ago. We also had some down periods where rank was down all of yesterday pretty much. So there aren't too many games being played on this patch yet. So I will be updating this patch throughout the week. So definitely look out for that. This is again going to be hosted on my website, bunnymuffins.lol. Um, and then just click on the meta snapshot. So no surprise here in the beginning. We have our S tiers as Olaf and Kale. Kale's still strong. Olaf really, really good. But before we get into the rest of the tier list, quick word from our sponsor, Opera GX. Oh, what's up, guys? We got the point of view here because I want to show you guys a new browser. It's called Opera GX, and it's made for gamers. And I'm showing you guys a dashboard right now. Let's start with the GX control menu. Here you can see which tabs are using the most CPU and RAM. And if we compare my Opera to Chrome right now by doing Control alt delete we can see that Chrome is using significantly more resources than Opera. So after that, I want to check out the sidebar, which has a lot of easy access apps that we use the most. So Discord, Twitter, and Messenger are all built in. And I open it right away, and boom, there's my Discord right there, and you guys can chat amongst yourselves with TFT or any other topic that you want. Going into Twitch, you just click Twitch right here. You see everyone you're following, and if they're live or not, and all the new live channels are prioritized first. Just click on any one of them and it loads right away and you don't have to type in Twitch into your browser. After we close out of that, I want to show you guys the GX corner which shows all the new games coming out and these are all free games. So if you're looking for free to play games, you can choose which console you want on the top here and pretty much just see every game that's coming out in a calendar and they show the exact release date for each of those games. The last thing I want to show you is this customization bar on the top right and you could change your colors here. At the click of a button, you can change your background from your desktop background to some of the defaults or to any new custom background. You could change all the sound settings. Pretty much all of this at a click of a button, which is really nice for both casual and power users. There are many more features that aren't discussed here in this video. So if you do want to check this out, link in the description down below. So again, like try it out. Let me know how it goes for you guys, because I think this is a relatively new product. It has to be right because it has so many new features. And there normally aren't that many things like built specifically for gamers, let alone an internet browser. So I highly suggest you guys check it out. And yeah, it takes like one second to download and install it. So if you're still hesitant on trying it out, at least try it out for me. But without further ado, let's get back right into the video. All right, we're back guys. So to finish off the tier list, Dragon Soul is the next comp in A tier or the first comp in A tier right after S tier. And Dragon Soul is really only good because they use Olap. I don't think the Dragon Soul trait is actually that great. It is decent, but... If you're playing Olaf, try to go for the Slayer variation, either 3 or 6 Slayer with pretty much anything, uh, but we'll get into more detail later. After that, 8 Brawler Shyvana, really, really strong because everything else got weaker. Talon, I will say that Talon is bugged right now, but he's still pretty good. If you get good items on him, his bug kind of doesn't matter, but I'm assuming when they fix it, he'll be pretty good. Fabled Vanguard Mystic is next, and I think... I'm the only person rating Fabled Vanguard Mystic higher on the tier list right now, and I think they're going to be sleeper OP throughout this patch. They're going to grow more in popularity. It's just a hunch that I have, but we'll see if that actually plays out. Onto the B tier, Mage Elderwood dropped a bit because Elderwood got nerfed by a lot. Duelist, Reroll got nerfed, so Duelists are going to suffer. Warlords, Reroll got nerfed, but Katarina 3 star is still pretty good. Zed, Zed moved up from C tier because everything else got nerfed. Assassins, Assassins, another sleeper OP comp. I've been saying this for a while, but it's just really difficult to play because it's hard to pull off because you need so many requirements for the comp to work. Um, that's why it can never really be A tier or S tier because it just takes too long for the comp to ramp up. Reroll Mages is actually pretty playable with brands, so I definitely recommend checking that out if you get a brand reroll at the start. And Reroll Diana, it's still possible to play. It just got nerfed a lot. Um, I just wouldn't do it that much if I were you guys. Uh, Reroll Nasus, garbage now. Cultus, they got a minor buff, so they're not the worst comp in the game. Dare I say they might even be B tier later in the patch, but I'm going to keep them in C tier for now because I just haven't seen anyone go for 9 Cultus, who's actually good at the game. Uh, and then Sharpshooters, yeah, when Nidalee gets nerfed completely, you're not going to be playing Sharpshooters anytime soon. So let's get into the rest of the tier list. We have Slayers. Slayers, there are many different builds. I have two builds over here, the three Slayer and six Slayer variation. There's also a bunch with like four Vanguards or like pretty much anything you want. Like any comp, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. Any comp with Samira two star with Deathblade, QSS or like Guardian Angel, like just Deathblade and a defensive item, you're gonna have a high chance of winning the lobby. I can't put Samira in every composition because she fits in literally so many. 
Uh, but just keep that in mind. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Samira, completely broken. Player in any comp with two Sharpshooter and three Slayer, and you're going to have a blast. Uh, but back to the Olaf build. You could play Samira in this too if you hit her late game, but you don't need her to win. Olaf is enough to get top four. And then if you want to get first place, add in a level one Samira. If you want to guarantee first place, add in a level two Samira with items. Uh, but yeah... This variation is pretty good. Don't go for the two Siphoner unless you have Swain too. This is like a more late game build that I have here. Uh, if you want to transition into this, you could either play six Slayer or do like four Vanguard like I talked about earlier or just play like random strong units. That works too. Uh, on to the next build, we have the six Slayer variation with Sivir. Sivir is going to be really great for buffing Olaf. Oh, and just to note, like I have GA here. I have RFC there. The items that you really want on Olaf are Deathblade and Runons. And then third item, either GA, either RFC. Both are really good. Some people just like slamming GA early if they know they're going to go Olaf. And that's perfectly fine to do too. Uh, like you don't need perfect items for Olaf, but they do really, really help later in the game if you want to get first place. But you don't always have to get first place every game. So just keep that in mind. Next up is Executioner Kale. Even though she got nerfed, she's still really popular. And I think she's still pretty good because her items work on so many different champions. So if you end up rolling down on level 7 or level 8, you get the chosen Kale or you just get a free Kale 2 during your roll down. She uses a lot of the same items as other people. So you might as well just build her. She's super flexible. And because of her flexibility in terms of items and the units that she plays, she still is in S tier. So you don't have to play what's on your screen right now. The only core units are these three back here, Yumi, Kindred, and Kale. And then with this, you could build up on it by adding in Divine, adding in Mystic, adding in more Executioners. Uh, it's all good from there. There's so many different options. Uh, on to the next tier, we have A tier Dragon Soul. This is just another Olaf build. There's nothing much else to say here. You could go for Dragon Soul, but I'd rather go for the uh the whatever what's the other one called i'd rather go for the slayer build of olaf uh another cool thing you could do is move aurelian soul to the front line with the hextech gunblade he'll end up healing a lot that's an interesting thing to do um, because he gets a dragon soul buff when you put him in the front line but overall like this build's pretty good but why are you going for this if you could play slayers instead uh, but if you get it you get it just play it uh, onto the next build, Shivana. Just because everything else got weaker, Shivana got a lot better. Shivana's kind of the same as Kale. She works with a lot of different items, even though Runons is the best item for Shivana. Uh, she uses a lot of Olaf items. You notice over here, all three of these items, they could be used on Olaf. So just go for Shivana if you get like a chosen brawler while you're trying to go for Olaf because it's still going to be really good. It's not going to be as good as the Olaf, but it's still very playable and I, I still recommend it. Next build, Enlightened Talon. So Talon's bug. When he ults, and he kills a unit, he doesn't get his mana refund right now. That's what I've been hearing. I haven't seen it myself in my own games because I haven't played Talon yet, but from everyone that, that I've talked to, like he's bugged, he doesn't get his mana back, but he's still not too bad in this game, which is really weird because once they change that, he's probably gonna be really good. I'm gonna leave him in the A tier for now because I'm pretty sure they're gonna fix it very, very soon. And once that happens, he's gonna be really nice. One thing to note, items are wrong here. Get a GA on Talon because Right now in this meta, there's a lot of things that kill him randomly, so you need the GA there, but you could go for GA plus any other two offensive items and do pretty well from there. Uh, if you don't get a GA, QSS is playable, but not ideal. After that, we have Fabled Vanguard Mystic. Again, this is like one of the, what I think is going to be like a sleeper comp this patch, because it's so easy to get the Chosens now that you could get really easy three stars of Nautilus or Nico in the mid game. And I think the power spike from that is going to be really, really nice once people figure out how to play it. There's this guy, I think he's in Korea. He like forces Fabled Vanguard Mystic every single game and he's like top 10. I'm not sure if he's just doing it as an experiment or if he actually thinks it's good, but it's just what I saw when I was scouting around. But key items to keep in mind is Jeweled Gauntlet and Guardian Angel. I feel like Guardian Angel is like one of the best items on Nico because when she dies, she throws a fade away ultimate, kills like a couple more people, and it really preserves your health while you wait to get three star Nico. So that's what I really like about this. Also with this build, you could go for more Mystics. You could go for fewer Vanguards. You could even go eight Vanguard if you get Vanguard Spatula. All of those builds work fine. Just depends on what Chosens you get. Uh, onto the next tier, we have B tier, Mage Elderwood. So this comp obviously took a huge hit. Nine Elderwood got a big nerf. Uh, I think like six Elderwood got a nerf also. And yeah, it, a lot of this comp's power just came from playing random units in the Elderwood synergy to really buff up the comp. But that's just not possible anymore because the buff just isn't that strong anymore. It's still good. So if you get nine El Elderwood or you get like great Aesol items, get an Aurelian Soul 2 on the roll down, like go for Elderwood. Like, if you have a spatula early, you could go for Elderwood. But it's not something that's, like, 
auto top four or like auto top three like it was in last patch when you started with a spatula you still have to like work for it now uh, which makes it a, a lot weaker than it was before that's why it's lower in the tier list it's still playable but if you're getting the a soul maybe try to go in for like an olaf build with dragon soul instead uh, that might be more interesting for your lp so next build duelist duelist took a huge hit all reroll comps took a huge hit i don't know if i mentioned this before because now it's like they nerfed all the units first of all and then after that like there's a higher chance to hit a chosen unit now so compositions that don't rely on like the first chosen are a lot stronger now because they could find their desired chosen later in the game and not get punished for it but overall like this comp's still good if you get like a lot of yasuo's early you could go for it but just keep in mind that there are better comps to go for than this and like maybe you shouldn't be re-rolling this patch uh, warlords still great because oh and when i say reroll i mean like the one cost reroll two cost and three cost reroll are still fine because they're easier to hit now because you get more chosen so it's kind of like a awkward effect where one cost rerolls are worse but two and three cost rerolls are better so onto the warlords warlords are still good they nerf warlord a lot but katarina three star with like perfect items which is gunblade qss and titan's resolve is gonna smash everything this is one of the comps that can fit in samira really well too so if you're going for one of those samira builds that i mentioned earlier it's gonna be like pretty logical to fit her in so worth a try if you still want to play warlords because if you get warlord chosen it's still gonna be a good comp zed zed with spirit is interesting uh, Zed got nerfed a tiny bit, but every other comp got nerfed a little more. I don't think Zed's that great, but it's definitely playable. You just need perfect items on him, which is really difficult to do. The chosen changes help him a lot because now you could get Zed chosen much easier. I think the spirit version is slightly better, but again, you could go for ninjas if you get a bunch of Akali items after that. And we'll get into an Akali build later, which I think is really interesting. Um, is, oh, oh, we're right there right now. So Akali with like three good items on her which is either like infinity edge rapid fire cannon well rapid fire cannon i think is a must but so rapid fire cannon infinity edge blue buff or quicksilver sash she's gonna be one tapping everything at three star with like six assassin four ninja and again with the chosen changes it's gonna be much easier to get a three star akali because it's gonna be much easier to get chosen akali and i highly recommend going for that if you have the items for her and if you have the akalis the only weird part about this is that this item combination no one uses this item combination. No one builds like RFC and Infinity Edge. I guess Olaf could use it, but it's not like best in slot for Olaf. So if you're going for Olaf, which you should be, or you're going for Kale, you're never going to have both these items or like a blue buff either in like any of your games. So it's just really hard to build into a Kali. You just kind of have to force it if you get a good early start for it. Let's say by like stage three, you have like a potential to go into a ninja build with like one and a half of these items uh, maybe you could consider going for it but if you don't have at least that i would just go for like olaf or kale like how you've been normally doing already on this patch um, onto the next build reroll mages brand reroll is actually like not too horrible now because every other reroll got nerfed but one cost rerolls are just a bunch weaker so unless you're going for like any three star if you get like any chosen it's kind of a little weird because even though two stars are better so like lulu and annie are better you're not going to go for reroll mage unless you have like a chosen twist of fate or brand in the beginning of the game preferably brand not even twist of fate so the whole buff to two star rerolls it doesn't even matter for this composition because you're still rerolling for brand and the chosen mechanic is going to work on brand so you don't get the chosen benefit for your two costs later in the game so while this is still playable i just don't recommend it because most one cost rerolls they're pretty much garbage right now they're like mediocre at best i should say and they're just better things to go for just just go for olaf and then pivot into like a samira or just go for anything then pivot into samira with some death blades like that's really all this patch is right now so far things can change because again we've only had like maybe like a day on the patch because there was a ranked outage because there's a ranked outage on the first day of the patch so lots of things can change and people are going to be discovering new builds hopefully and we'll just go from there a reroll diana spirit assassins like reroll diana it's just a lot worse now diana got nerfed so many times as i mentioned in my patch preview and reroll got nerfed so it's just like just don't go for it it's just not that fun to do anymore nasa's garbage he got nerfed too hard uh, cultus like you can probably play nine cultus i just wouldn't try to do it you know what i'm saying like i think it actually does work 
but you need to get the zillion late game if you want to go nine cultists if you're going six cultists you need to know how to pivot into other things it's kind of like a high skill cap low reward type of build so it's like you have to be really good at it and even if you are good at it you might not get the best results and if you're not good at it you definitely won't get the results that you want uh, that's just my opinion maybe things will change maybe someone discovers like an easy way to play them and in that case like cultists will be really nice for a lot of players but right now like they just buff the magic resist of galio and i don't really think that does that much because galio doesn't really die to magic damage in my opinion he dies to sustain damage and magic damage is mostly like burst damage and that's literally the only thing they buffed about him they didn't touch any of the units i believe so all the unit strength is like exactly the same as before so there's really like not that big of a buff to galio in the recent patch so i i still don't think he's playable but if you guys give it a shot, let me know how it goes because it is a really fun comp. So spoiler alert, I played it on my new account, which I, I made a new account on Japan to do like an unranked diamond video. I played Cultist there, but like it's much lower elo, so obviously I'm going to do well in it. But it was really fun, so maybe if you guys try it out, have some fun, let me know how it goes. And Because at the end of the day, like if you're not having fun in the video game, then it's like, why are you playing it? Um, sharpshooters... Yeah, don't play sharpshooters anymore. Nidalee's garbage now because, well, she's not garbage, but she's not the same as before. Like, they nerfed a bug about her. They reduced her close range damage by a lot, which they should have, for the record. They should have done that. But, like, the whole comp was just built around Nidalee, and she just got completely gutted. So she's more of, like, a support unit now rather than a primary carry. So I just wouldn't play her at all. And that's it. So if we go back to the top, like, let's just sum up. Samira gonna be broken. I need to add that to the meta summary here. So I'm going to do that right after this video. After that, it's like Olaf as like your more consistent carry. Uh, Kale is another good consistent carry. So those are the two champs you should be going for and like the items you should be building for. Uh, Dragon Soul, that's just another Olaf build. Shivana uses the same items as Olaf and Kale. Talon, he's bugged right now, but I think when they fix him, he's going to be really good and he's okay right now. So I would still play him. Hopefully they do a hot fix on that. Uh, Fable Vanguard Mystic, I think this is going to be the sleeper comp right now. And there's a couple of like one tricks playing Fable Vanguard Mystics and like pretty much forcing it. Mage Elderwood, a lot weaker now. Reroll, completely gutted. So no Duelist, uh, no Diana, no Mage, no Nasus. Uh, the two and three cost reroll, still good. So Warlords and Zed, still good. Assassins, probably still good. Um, and then, yeah, Cultists and Sharpshooter, just like Sharpshooters, it's another reroll comp. So don't, don't play that. Cultists, they got a slight buff, but it's like, not really. If you buff something from like, let's say you had an exam and you got a 40% on it, and then they buff you to like 45%, you still got an F, you know? So yeah, they, they need something more than like a tiny magic resist buff in my opinion. But yeah, that's the patch so far. I will update this. This says the wrong number on it. Holy crap. I'll definitely update this next week, if not in the middle of the week as well. So definitely look out for that on my website, bunnymuffins.lol. And again, if you guys haven't already, check out Opera GX, link in the description below. And I'll see you guys for my Unranked to Diamond challenge on the Japanese server. Uh, so I'll see you guys there.